Hello, everyone. We are back. <laughs> All right. So, you have Salazar's wall fenced manor before you. It appears to be abandoned or at least asleep and quiet. I think the, it's like I said, the middle of the night. So there's not many people out and about at this time. Those that are gawk at Gentleman Moose. <laughs> what does everyone want to do? Um, is the gate locked? Yes, it is. <clears throat> Did you slip around the other side? Is it locked with a padlock or? Uh, no, with a key. I could have a look at the guardhouse to see if there's anyone there or a key miss just out. I think that would be a very good idea. Okay. Give me a search roll. Okay. That is an 18. Okay. So the guardhouse is a very small structure. It's like enough room for a chair mm -hmm. and that's about it. <laughs> Uh, so it does not take you long to notice the rather out of place potted plant, which, <laughs> which, I mean, presumably in when it's not winter would have a plant in it. Uh, so you just like look under it, and there is a key <laughs> <laughs> okay. for the gate. <laughs> Also, as you're in here, uh, this this place has like other than the potted plant has a thin layer of dust. Like it has not seen use in some time. Okay, that could be on account of him not having money to pay his staff. So, I hope that's it. <laughs> okay, scurry back with the key. I'm being useful. Very good. <laughs> Great. Okay. So the gate opens before you with a slight screech of metal. And what do you do? Uh, I would. I think. Yeah. I'd like to uh, walk the perimeter of the manor itself. All right. Um, sounds like it's probably a search check, I think. Because I assume you're okay. looking for stuff. Um, yeah, looking for probably any, uh, uh, like, signs of struggle, forced entry, crimes afoot, whatever. I'm not, oh. Ooh. Well, I was just about to say I'm not very good at searching, but I just rolled a natural 20, so. <laughs> Do you have any ranks in search, though? I have... Nope. Okay, so that means that you That's can't easy. crit and you max out at okay. 15, unfortunately. Okay, well, then I just rolled a natural 15. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, as you are walking the grounds... You notice everything that I described earlier to V. Um, hmm. Is there anything else of note that you would get with a 15? Ah, okay. Here's here's the thing that you do spot as that you wouldn't have seen from the uh, the gate is that um, there's there's a. Uh, woodshed near the servant's entrance in the back uh, 
and it's locked but if you peek through the window on the door you can see that there is basic there's almost no wood inside of it there's like two logs isn't quite the right word <laughs> they're bigger than sticks smaller than logs <laughs> so that that is something that you discover <clears throat> uh, well, I think it's left up to me. I'm going to make my way uh, to the inside, probably just via the front door. Okay, so you come back around the front. What are V and Dorothy up to while Viper walks the perimeter? I am going to uh, use my height advantage <laughs> and peek into the second story windows if I can. Um, <laughs> hmm. I think you actually cannot because this is a manor. Like, I mean, you can if you find something to stand on, <laughs> right? I'm, I'm, I'm on Gentleman Moose. Oh, you I'm just, right, gentleman. yes, okay, you just walked the moose right <laughs> onto the ground. Yes, okay, fair. Okay, um, so yeah, you look, you look in through the windows and... You can see that there's a great many... Oh, you know what? Give me another search check. Sure thing. Do you have any okay. ranks in search? I certainly, I certainly do. I have one rank in search. You do? Wow. Wow, lucky. So that is actually <laughs> a natural 20 and not a natural 15. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to spend any action dice to make this sure. a crit? Yeah, let's do that. Okay, how many? Be always gotta upstage somebody. <laughs> <laughs> how many action dice do you want to spend on this? Ah, uh, just the one. Um, Fair. All right. So, um, as you look through the second floor windows of this manor. Uh, what you notice is that several of the upstairs rooms are devoid of furniture. And you can tell that by, by peeking in... Oh, wait, hold on a second. Do any of y'all have anything to see at nighttime with? Oh, I have light spells. And I have torches. Okay, and what about you, V? That's a very fine question you've asked. <laughs> <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Literally nothing. All right. Uh, does anyone want to provide V with something to see in the dark? as the lights of the city don't quite reach into the interior of this of these grounds sure i'll i'll roll dance uh spell crafting for dancing lights nice thank you uh, and scroll up. and that is 17 <laughs> okay and do you, do you have to roll a taint for that? Yes. And that's just a will save. Oh, DC, I don't remember. We'll see. Okay, I got a 17, so I think we're good. Yeah, it was a low-level spell, so I'm sure you're fine. Do you still have any taint? No, no. Okay. All my taint is gone for now. <laughs> All right. So I guess there's... What, how does this spell look? Well, it's in well, effect. It, it, I can shape it to pretty much whatever. So it's four lantern-like lights um, that can be moved anywhere in a 60-feet sphere. And it lasts for a minute. Um, and... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's just, it lasts for a minute. And it can move anywhere in a 60-feet sphere. And it's just, it's like a soft glowing lantern at a convenient height. 
<laughs> All right. So V, thanks to some assistance from Dorothy by providing some illumination, uh, you were able to tell that these rooms, as I said, are empty of furniture, um, and the, the the cracks in the doors to these rooms appear to have uh, been sealed with rags. Hmm. Uh, Presumably to keep any cold air out from spreading to the rest of the manor. Um, there appears to be only... Hold on. Uh, there appears to be only three bedrooms that are in use. Um, one is a servant's room that is spartan but comfortable there's nothing fancy here but clearly uh salazar's servant whoever resided here lived comfortably enough um the second you find is a guest room or perhaps a uh, another residence room Clearly not servants' quarters. This one is well appointed. There's fancy stuff in here, but you can tell that some of the things that might have been valuable are no longer present. Like there is spots where you can tell that the the gold filigree on the furniture has been like scraped out from it so there's no longer gold trim on it or brass even it's just the very functional wood of the furniture itself um and no one is sleeping in either of these rooms no one no one is present the third room you find is the master bedroom with a massive four post bed and like the uh, a canopy on top excuse me there is an oh also all three of these rooms and have uh, simple like cast iron stoves in them none of them are lit and in this bedroom in, in the master bedroom there's lots of fine furnishings this one does not have the gold filigree carved out of the furniture. Um, it still maintains a number of the fine details. There, you can see that there is a jewelry box on one of the dressers. And while there is some, uh, there are some empty spots, there is still enough jewelry to uh, look fine if you were to go to uh, an opera opening, for instance. In this four-post bed is a sleeping Saurian, an mm. Iguanian. Just laying there, asleep. <laughs> it, it, uh, he appears to be older. Um, and... What else might be notable? Um, I think it is safe to assume that this is Salazar, since this is the master bedroom. And he... <laughs> you know what? I think he's got on, like, a nightshirt that is monogrammed with his name on it. <laughs> so <laughs> that's another way to tell that it is him. Brilliant. Yep. So he, he is passed out in the bed. Oh, uh, sorry. But because you got a crit, you can tell that he is in fact dead. Oh. Ah. Huh. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> there, there is no, like, subtle... I think with Saurians, it can be sometimes hard to discern. Um, because their physiology is, uh, you might say, quieter than 
the humans and elves and Kadem in the city. But he is too still, even for a Saurian. Mm. Okay. Um, I, I believe I will, I will find the others and uh, let them know that the master is in the house, but is not alive, and there is nothing in this building at all. That's just on the second floor, to be clear. Yeah, correct, yes. Um, at least as far as I can I can see from my spot. Viper, in your walk around the house, um, you, you could see in some of the windows that didn't have, like, the curtains drawn, and you can see that there is still, like, furniture in this place. At least on the first floor, anyways. <laughs> right. All right, well, we'll continue uh, to try to get the chains off of the front door which are uh, that's still weird yeah so the front door is a fine heavy oaken door and yeah there's these big heavy chains wrapped around the handles the door is slightly ajar the chains keeping them closed and they are like padlocked shut or pa the, the chains are padlocked together. And as I said, there is a like one in, one or two inch gash in the door. So um, how are you going to try and get these chains off? Um, hmm. Would you like me to send Foxglove in to search for a key on the inside? Or is it no, that's wouldn't that's stupid did you say um did you say earlier there was already a window broken out yes but the windows are also barred uh oh like it's it's okay. v noticed yeah. that okay. it's very yeah. subtle yeah. but i had forgotten that yeah how wide are the bars <clears throat> um hmm i think they're probably I think Foxglove could get in, but I don't think Dorothy could. Okay. Maybe with an ath er, acrobatics check. Uh, I think you can squeeze using acrobatics. Let me double check. Um, tumble. Character. Uh, balancing. Hmm. Uh, it doesn't mention squeezing, but I I would allow that if you want to make a acrobatics check to try and squeeze through. Are all the doors chained? From and is it from the inside or outside? Sorry. From the outside, that's on the out outer handles. Um, let's see. Yeah, there's only the two doors. There's the servants' door and the front door. Um, let's see, I think, let's see, whoa, I think the servant's door, yeah, is also chained. <laughs> what if it wasn't, but he was kept inside because he just refused to use the servant's entrance? <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right. So, what do y'all do? Uh, failing the production of a key from anywhere, uh, try to figure out what fantasy crafts rules for destroying an object are. So squeezing, a character may move through a space at at least half his footprint rounded up. When he's doing so, he's flat-footed, loses dodge bonus to defense, and moves at half normal speed. Yeah, I don't think that'll work for the bars on the windows. They are like an arm's width, like a human arm's width, so too big for even Dorothy. I imagine but. the um, the look of them is kind of um, stained glassy, but without the glass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably, since they have the like iron framing, in a sense. Um, here. Let's see. Damage. Page 155 is what you're looking for, Hadrian. Okay. 
We could buy thieves tools and then come back. There is uh, nothing. Okay, nothing so I've disturbed this place other than us recently, so. So you just make attacks against it? Yeah. And then it rolls a uh, save? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm just going to uh, punch this lock off the door. <laughs> oh, oh my god, that'd be sick. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so this Actually, is... You, need... you might have better, uh, a better chance of breaking the door itself rather than the lock on the door considering like the damage saves are dependent on material and size wood, wood and metal are both hard they have the same oh. damage save bonus yeah. okay yeah and I imagine the door gets a size bonus too <laughs> yes yes it would <laughs> yeah okay so do you need me to roll to hit no you do not need to roll just to hit. just damage <laughs> Yeah. Eight. Okay. One punch. Eight <laughs> damage. Since uh, we're up to one inch thick. Okay. So I think that this will... <laughs> it's going to be a damage save. Um, let's see. Damage save. DC 10 e plus half the damage inflicted. So this will be DC 14, and its save modifier is, uh, what do you call it, plus 6 because it's hard, and but its size is a nuisance since it's like 1 inch thick, which is, gives it a minus 4 penalty. So plus 6 total. Plus 6. Good grief. <laughs> That's a 25. Um, so I'm not going to have you just like repeatedly rolling again and again. <laughs> if you want to keep at it, you will eventually break it. But it will take time. <clears throat> but I didn't get to look super cool and just punch you off in one go. <laughs> Unfortunately not. <laughs> so Well, unless anyone else has any other ideas, I'm going to... Uh... Are the higher windows barred? Hmm. You know what? I don't think they are. Okay. Well, um, at the very least, uh, Dorothy can, can get in um, <laughs> through the windows. Um. And then, oh, you can improvise items of a complexity of uh, max seven. So I can get in and improvise like a like a rope ladder. Yeah. <coughs> for us to get in. Okay. All right. Uh, so how are you getting this window open? Is it openable? From the outside? It... No. Um. I'm gonna. I'm. I'm gonna one punch it. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'll I'll use I'll use my bullet. We'll say, I don't know. It's 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 more likely to to work. <laughs> okay, give me that damage save or that damage roll. Cause I got a six. Nice. It's the max. <laughs> okay, so needs to make DC thirteen. And it's rolling one D twenty minus four. <laughs> Salazar did not skimp on the materials in the cons are, in his manner. I'd like to, windows. To, to break it open with a lance. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna have you keep rolling. <laughs> just because <laughs> I think I think you're able to handle it eventually. You just smash the window open. Turns out this house is our first boss fight. <laughs> <laughs> 
And so you knock out all the sharp glass with like the butt of your lance or the lance itself, whatever. Um, Thanks, madame. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what what room did you knock the window out of? Um. Hmm. So, so there's basically four types of rooms that you've seen. There's the master room, the guest room, the servant room, and one of the several empty rooms. Um, I think one of the... Uh, the well, the, the, I think actually the guest room is the most likely to have an open door. I, I, I do... Um, I, I do tell um, Dorothy about um, Salazar, and but that I suspect um, that that door is locked because all of his things are still there. Mm. So it would not be a super good infiltration point, but it is worth worth thinking about. So yeah, it's the, um, the guest room. The guest room, all right. So yes. Uh, and Dorothy, you have your lights about you, I take it? Yes. All right, you'll have to leave V in the dark. <laughs> As no, I have four lights that can be brought anywhere. Within 60 feet of you. Oh, is it 60 feet away? I thought, yeah, I mean, this is a manor. It is a large, it is probably one of the largest, if not the largest building inside of this district. It is bigger than the townhouse, which, like, I don't just mean proportionally bigger. It is that as well, but it is also just square footage larger than the townhouse. So, I'll be all right. Go ahead. Okay. Well, they only last a minute anyway, so <laughs> they're probably gone. Fair. So, are you? How are you going to see in this darkened manner as you explore it? Well, I'm not exploring it yet. I'm crafting a rope ladder at a, or a rope for people to be able to climb up into the <laughs> you, into the window. Does anyone have rope? First? No, I'm improvising it. Yes, yes, I know, but I'm asking, oh. like, do we do we need <laughs> you to like cut the rope out or? <laughs> um, I, this is probably not the best time to bring this up, but I don't have rope specifically because rope is far too weak for people our size to climb. Uh, how <laughs> much do you weigh? Is that a rude question? <laughs> uh, about two thousand-ish pounds. So if we put two ropes down. <laughs> <laughs> well, more, think... more like to according to the uh, fantasy craft rule book, it'd be more like uh, two large iron chains. Hmm. Is it is it possible to just sort of um, give each other a boost off of gentleman moose to get up there? <laughs> yeah, you you can probably get in. That might be off of that might be more practical. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I guess the two of you give me an athletics check. Great. To climb in the window. Happy to do so. Oh, as a reminder, you can take 10 to take your time and just have your result count as a 10 plus whatever your modifier is. I should have done that. <laughs> seven. Uh. Okay, well, I'll, I'll, I'll take the 10, which would put me, which would put me at 16. <laughs> okay. And uh, I guess help uh, Madam V uh, also. <laughs> yes, so with a bit of help from her friends, V is well, eventually yeah. able to get inside. So, so she, was, she was sitting on Gentleman Moose and looking a bit tentative, so I hopped up and then offered her her hand up. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> so, is there a is there a fire starter next to the fireplace in the room? Uh, yes, there is a fire starter kit. Okay, then I would like to put a fire in the fireplace for light. Okay. All right. Um, and uh, the fire starter finds its way into my backpack. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So yes, you you light the uh, stove in here. Uh, this room has uh, th there's a small bag of dried dung next to the stove, and uh, so you go. 
Let me, let me think about this just a second. Um, so you, you start it up and immediately smoke starts filling the room. Hmm. I open the fan? The well, the, fl the f flume the, the chimney is oh <laughs> is supposed to be open. I mean, obviously, the the smoke goes out the broken window, so it's not a concern that anyone is going to suffocate to death in here. But the uh, the, the, the the chimney can, is blocked. I can infer that the chimney's blocked. Yeah. Oh, I could have. Um... I can have Foxglove climb up the chimney and see what's that, what's up with that. Okay. Uh, so how does your connection with Foxglove work? Well, uh, okay. So it says that we have... Um... Okay, let me pull this up. Um... It says that we have a... We know each other's emotional state so long as we're in one mile of each other, including stress damage, any baffled, enraged, fixated, frightened, or shaken conditions. Like, we know that. So we have, like, I don't know, a bond of emotional... Like, we know each other's emotions. <laughs> I, I, I sound very hippie-like right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you can't... So. Foxglove can't like just straight up tell you what is in in there. I guess not. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, but I do have whispers where I can have a conversation with a character. Do you hmm I I have I have an interest in rats. <laughs> <laughs> and I would like to use that interest. Hmm. I don't think, I think, like, I can't hold out a conversation with Foxglove, but I can get, like, like, it, 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 she doesn't okay. have the intelligence for that, but she could, like, describe things. Okay. Um, I think she just, like, go, she knows what you want, though, I think. Yes. So she goes and she brings back, like, a piece of rag that is, like, soot covered. Oh, okay, so, so it was. It looks like uh, Salster blocked this off so that there wouldn't be a draft. I assume. And Foxglove gets a sunflower seed. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, Foxglove. It's a good girl. So, what do y'all do? Alright, uh, well, are there any, like, lamps or lanterns or anything that can be lit? Uh, weirdly, no. Hmm. No well, candles? This, this place is pretty well pillaged. <sighs> Not in here. Um... I wonder how long uh, Salazar has been dead. Sorry, Christine. I keep it. Oh, no, 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 no. <clears throat> well, it's hard not to interrupt with Z. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to go to the master bedroom? I'd like to, yes. All right. Uh, has anyone given V a torch or... Recat or recast Yeah, I was going to say, I have torches. Uh, slightly hesitant to light them indoors, but I don't see any other options at the moment, so... I can cast the light spell if you'd prefer not to have a torch indoors. Well, torch lasts a few hours. Yeah. So, <laughs> let's do that. Alright, then. Yeah, but the only drawback of me casting spells is I could be possessed. Oh, yeah, that's oh all. God. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. I'll light a torch. <laughs> Okay, so the three of you make your way to the master bedroom by torchlight. 
There is a grand staircase going from the second floor down to the foyer at the front door. And by the torchlight, you can see that there are two iguanians laid out in front of the door. Mm. Uh, a wood axe lays next to one of them. Uh, one of them is wearing uh, fairly fine clothes and appears to be about middle age. The other one is wearing a servant's outfit and is older. There is a uh, there's a candle and holder dropped on the floor near them. It's got gone out. And you can see from this side that the front door has a number of uh, gashes in it, but only one spot where it was broken through. Are you going to continue on to the... Is there something that I'm not describing well, Hadrian? No, I'm just puzzling out what might have happened here. All right. Do you continue on to the master bedroom, or do you want to go and check out the foyer? I'd, I'd like to see the, the bedroom. I'm going to take the wood axe. Okay. <laughs> uh, Not just because I love to steal. <laughs> <laughs> Will Dorothy be cha- taking a level of burglar at some point in the future? Who knows? Okay. Um, let me... i got to find the, the rules for this axe. I'll, I'll pull them up. Um, it's it's just an axe. Okay. Um, it's, it's probably lower quality. I forget what the specific term for that is. Crude, I think. E- probably. Um, but yeah, so it, it's a it's a crude axe. It's not like a weapon made for battle. It is a wood axe. Yeah. It's just that my all my weapons are blunt, or not blunt. Um, Subdual, sub- yeah. Yep. Okay, so uh, you continue on to the master bedroom. Uh, in spite of V's concerns, the door is unlocked, and you go inside. Uh, now that you are inside of it. Uh, like the rest of the house it is chilly in here not quite as cold as the guest room with the broken window but definitely you can tell by the uh the glass of water or should i say glass of ice next to salazar's bed Mm. that it is below freezing in here which bothers none of you because (laughs) you are constructs and plants right not, not flesh-based <laughs> weaklings. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Uh, so yeah, what do you all want to do? I'd like to examine the body. And what do uh, V and Viper plan on doing while Dorothy's doing that? Um, uh, I, would, I would like to root around the room for anything with a date on it, possibly a, a, a writing desk or something. And Viper? Um, holding the light, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so that will be I'll a... Provide, I'll provide assistance on the uh, body examination if Dorothy needs some muscle. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So from Viper and Dorothy, that will be an investigate check. Um... I still haven't found the rules for assistance, unfortunately. So what I will say is that if you... Is that the the start of uh, the skill section? Uh, All right. Thank you. Um, So let's see. It's multitasking. It's critical for the team checks. Uh, If every... If only one character must succeed for the entire team to reap the benefits, the character with the highest skill bonus makes the check. Okay, so unless you have Investigate, Viper, I think only Dorothy is rolling. Um, my Investigate is 7. The total uh, modifier? Yep. Huh. I. No offense, but I was not expecting that. 
Uh-huh. <laughs> I have scoops only four. I know. <laughs> well, how about that? And I rolled a 19, so that's 26. Well done. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Uh, so between the... Vi Viper's learned over her lifetime that it pays to be attentive. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so... The two of you are... Well, actually, hold on. Uh, Dorothy, why don't you roll anyways? Because there's the chance you could get a crit. Oh, okay. Uh... No. That's a 13. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, between the two of you, you are able to discern that Salazar has been dead for about two days. And died from hypothermia. Hmm. Do you have any other questions about him? He is elderly. Like, um, seems like he might not have been in the, like, greatest of health. Not in a, like, dying kind of way, but just in a elderly individual sort of way. Yeah. Is there any, um, in the room, is there any, uh, anything for the fireplace? Any fuel? Yes, there is wood in here. Huh. Okay. And is the chimney stopped up? If you send Foxglove to go check it, yes it is. Hmm. V, why don't we get that uh, search roll from you? Sure, yeah. Um, search. Oh, it's a 16. And that's a point, right? Not a modifier, not a, like an attribute modifier? You have one rank in search? Ah, I've been reading the wrong thing. Um, I, okay, I have a total of one in it, and I have no rings in it, correct. Ah, uh, okay, so you should not have gotten that crit earlier, but that's okay. So you... <laughs> <laughs> so you, you max out at 15. Um, let's see, what, what do you find in this room? Uh, well, there's everything you saw before here. Um... Something else that you notice is that there is a desk in this room that sal presumably was Salazar's writing desk, as there is writing supplies spread out upon it, along with a half-melted candle and Salazar's signet ring mm -hmm. are on this desk. Um... What else might be notable? I, I have something that could be added in, in that. Um, the fabric that has been stuffed up the chimney, um, both, does it match uh, any of the fabric in the room? Uh, what type of fabric is it? And also, are there curtains on the windows? And does it look like there was once curtains on the windows if there were not curtains in the windows? No, the fabric does not match anything in this room. It is a, the fabric in the, the, the chimneys, as I mentioned, is rags. Like, clearly well, they... Rags. Fair, yeah. Okay, but I mean, like, they are not... <laughs> it's not fine textiles. The They are... They would be cool. out of place here outside of, like... I don't know, the kitchen being used to clean something. Um, do you have any other questions, V, about anything in this room? Hmm, um... Is there any writing, like any any journals, any any documents, any anything that would give me a sense of um, what Salazar was up to in this room, just on the regular or more recently? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, as I said, there's his writing desk. Uh, you're able to find like a ledger and uh, his correspondence. There's a like 
This is his writing desk and has maybe decades worth of papers. So mm -hmm. it's going to be an investigate check to possibly find what you might be looking for. Okay. Investigate. That's a 12. Okay. What are you looking for? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm looking for um, any, any uh, evidence of any correspondence with collaborators, anything about the spark, anything about um, the university and, 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 and associations they're in. Um, anything about us, if, if we for whatever reason are name checked, because I, I mean, um, I, I suppose Ingrel actually would be the, 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 the biggest name to check, but um, the opera itself, like trying to figure out if there's anything about our situation um, that was pre-planned here. Okay, uh, so there are two things that you find, I think, that are relevant. The first is you find the other half of the correspondence between Istal and Salazar. You find Istal's letters to Salazar when Ingril found Salazar's letters to Istal earlier at the uh, delegation. Um, Istal's letters are basically telling Salazar about the opera, what it's about, asking for uh, funding, and eventually a letter um, saying that they were sorry to hear that Salazar uh, was in financial troubles. Hmm. Uh, the other thing that you find is in the ledger, uh, you basically see that Salazar was bleeding his estate dry by funding the arts. Hmm. Like, just going whole hog into any pro project that took his fancy. Um, Does Salazar have children? I was about to say, you probably find there is a letter dated from, like, a while ago uh, from his son uh, begging his father to stop spending so much on the arts. There are, like, he is getting visits from creditors for the estate, like, and he's basically saying that he's concerned that uh, he is going to have to start paying, like, his father's debts. Should, that he's going to inherit his father's debts. Rich people problems. Yeah. Well, not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um. Um, so it's interesting the timeline that Pollock. Pollock? Pollock? Pollum? Pollum. Pollum died three days ago and Salser died two days ago. This is interesting to keep in mind, I think. Is there a date on the letter that was sent with the crate? Uh, was there. Uh, I think it would have been dated, like, it It would have claimed to be the night of the opening. Mm hmm At which point we know, if, without a doubt, Salazar was dead at that point. Yeah. Because that's, I mean, that was like 12 to 18 hours ago. So. <laughs> <laughs> been a long night. <laughs> yeah. Um I would like to go down and 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 look at the um the two laid out in front of the door to see if I can't find any kind of identification for who they are. Okay. Um now that I know that um Salazar has his son. Yeah, yeah, same see what uh see if we can figure out uh why they're dead or if they also just froze to death okay who uh so i'll we'll say this is like a group investigate so does anyone have higher than vipers seven lord no <laughs> oh minus one okay yeah got another 26 <laughs> exact same result um yeah okay so here's which so f feel free to ask me questions that's a very good result uh, but here is what you get initially. The two Iguanians by the front door are clearly a servant who lived in this in this manner alongside Salazar. Uh, the other 
in searching the body is another well-off Iguanian, um, most likely Salazar's son, and eventually you find that he also has a, a slightly modified version of Salazar's signet ring, enough to indicate mm. a family connection, mm -hmm. but different enough to say that he is his own person. Um, they both died of hypothermia, and mm. yeah, the, the axe was laid out next to uh, the son, um, who is, like I said, wearing fairly nice clothes. Mm. Uh, let's see, but he is also like in a nightshirt. Mm. Um, what else? I think it's probably safe to say he wasn't killed for by his son for pissing away the inheritance. Are they wearing brassiers? Um, let's see. You know what? I no, they do not have brassiers on them, and that is something else that now that you think about it has been missing from like the bedroom and the uh, guest room and, and like there's no sign of Braz of like the traditional Saurian Brazzers to be mm. carried in the winter. Hmm. Seems like a, a cruel thing to do. My theory is that someone had come in and removed the brasiers and stuffed the chimneys and then locked them in so maybe that they would freeze to death in their sleep and these two men woke up and tried desperately to get out that's not mm. theory mm. that's just fully murder then as far as I can tell. I don't think there are any other words for it. Now, what I'm curious about is that if, I, I suppose the lock could be reapplied, however, assuming that the culprit did all of this and then locked the house and left, they would have to have written the letter prior to the murders. Or I suppose they could have come in and after after these men died and, and written the letter and then relocked the doors. But they wouldn't have re they would have to have done that through the back entrance because the front entrance showed signs of someone desperately trying to escape. I think we need to figure out who Salazar owed money to. find a place to start. Hmm. Also, why the... what they have against giants. <laughs> <laughs> Truly. Well, it could be that whomever did this could, could be a political terrorist. Um, we did sort of leave the rest of the world to suffer under the quarantine and just sort of locked everyone out like shut down majority of refugees and locked them out and perhaps they're just trying to break the quarantine so that the people on this uh, land uh, care about finding a cure and, and not just living our daily lives and enjoying theater so terrorists but with a cause Freedom fighters. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, well, in any event, uh, I would love to know who these people are. So, what do you do? I, I think I would like to go back and um, go th go through the ledger to see to to just to spot the people that um, that Salazar was borrowing money from um, or selling to or yeah 
Okay. Uh, so, doing this kind of research is an investigate check. Hey, Viper, do you want to go <laughs> for work? I, yeah, and I think we can probably take our time on this one. Mm -hmm. yeah. so. Well, re doing a research in a single book is 1d6 hours. Okay. So... Hmm. I would like to take this the time that they're investigating to sneak around the manor and see if there's anyone else inside or if there's um just I guess make sure that we're alone here um or if there's anything notable since we've sorry no sorry go ahead I wonder if there's a downstairs if there's a yeah. basement to this place okay um so Viper, why don't you give me an investigate check? Yeah. And uh, give me a, a 1d6 as well to see how long it takes you to work through it. Ooh. Another Viper. 26? <laughs> what? That's three 19s in a row. How are you? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I swear I didn't do nothing. <laughs> Okay, so it's going to take you four hours. Four so hours. it's going to be like one in the morning by the time you finish going through this ledger. All right. So in the meantime, um, r remind me to come back to you, Viper. Mm -hmm. So uh, V and Dorothy, the two of you are searching through this building. Who has the better search role? I have four. Search, search, search. I have. You do. You have better. Okay, so give me that search. 15. 15, okay. So, from what you can tell of looking around the manor, it appears that the only two residents are the servant and Salazar. The son was. In a guest, as previously mentioned. Uh, something to note is that while the second floor has been just about scraped clean of anything of value, the first floor is much more uh, subtle about what is missing. Like any sort of gold candelabras, for instance, have been replaced by pewter ones as opposed to there just not being any candelabras at all. Um, what else? Uh, as you go through the house, I'm just going to say that you have Foxglove check all the chimneys. All of them are blocked with the same kind of cheap textile stuffed into them. Um, the basement is like cold storage there is a wine cellar here that is basically empty. There's a single bottle of vino down here. Um, what else? Do you have any other questions about this place? I was mostly just looking to see if, you know, if one kept um, spark experiments in one's house where, where they, they keep them, <laughs> but I suspect that was not the point is is there any of the arts that um that Salazar was supporting any evidence of that anywhere like posters or or sculptures or i think as you search you can definitely find spots on like the floor where there's marks where art and on the walls where art used to be but are no longer present not so much a question here, but did, uh, mm, can't remember their name, uh, did the giant mention how the pallet, or the, the box, uh, got to the manor? It was delivered by courier. By courier. Okay, that will, I'm going to make a note to track all that down. Yeah. 
courier service becomes suddenly very suspicious. <laughs> well, we can probably trace back to who paid for it eventually. Give it a leisure. <laughs> Okay. I don't know. So, no signs of. Were there any signs of, um, I guess, hosting? Uh, that. Uh, oh shoot, what's his name? Solister, like, did he host a dinner or there wasn't another room made up for another overnight guest or. Was there evidence of a fourth party being in the residence for any amount of time? Um, nothing, like, like, there's no s signs that there was anyone recently present. Uh, clearly, Salazar still has the tools necessary for hosting um, people over. Like I said, there is that single bottle of wine. I think there's a bottle of brandy in the sitting room with like a glasses set accompanying it. Mm -hmm. um, there's the food necessary to make hors d'oeuvres in, in the kitchen's ice box. But there's no like, there's no sense that he was throwing anything grand. The manor does have a ballroom but there's no piano in there. Like as much as he might have wanted to try to keep up appearances, there's no instruments. The, in fact, I think that you find that the ballroom, much like the upstairs rooms, has been sealed with rags to keep the cold out of the rest of the building. Um, but yeah. There's no signs that he was throwing any large soirees. Yeah. Oh, oh another thing that I, I had just assumed, but might. Is the weather outside cold enough for a Saurian to die of hyperthermia? Absolutely. Like, okay. in, in here, the as I said, there was a, a glass of ice next to Salazar's bed. Right, right. Yeah, it's it's cold enough for Ingrol to die of, of hypothermia outside. I think the three of you are immune to cold. Um, I would, it, it, it just seems so odd for someone of Salazar's station, or at least uh, of, of wealth, to, to fritter it away in such, such a way. I feel like there must have been something, at least personally, uh, worse going on with, with, with him that he decided that's, that's how he wanted to spend his son's inheritance well unless he was also like second generation or further generation wealthy sometimes you just have bad spending I suppose. And too much panache <laughs> not enough prudence <laughs> okay so viper uh you were investigating the ledgers. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. First of all, I've covered Salazar's body. He's give him as much dignity as possible. Hmm. So as you go through the ledger, you discover that Salazar had a lot of debt. Oh, boy. S of varying legitimacies, or rather from varying uh, sources of varying legitimacy there are three main individuals to whom he owed money and you can see that some of them in fact were buying up the debt from other sources as well the first mm -hmm. is that he owed money to the dirt folk guild which mm -hmm. As I mentioned before, is the Coal Miners Guild trying to expand into uh, other forms of labor. Makes sense. Uh, that is probably the third uh, largest group that he owed money to. The second largest group that he owed money to is a person named 
Hennet Allen. There's no, like, further indication as to who Hennet Allen is. Can you type that in the chat just so I can see it? <laughs> sure. And then the last person who he owed the most money to. But, the draconian Jeff Bezos. But sl only slightly more <laughs> than to Hennet Allen is, yes, Lord Omba Broadwing. Mm. So, frankly, Broadwing and Allen have comparable amounts of debt owed to them right. by Salazar. With the Dirt Folk Guild... Uh, a distant but not insubstantial third. So just having broad knowledge of social figures within the city, this name is not familiar? Hmm. Let me... Uh, I'll let you make... Hmm, what would be a <laughs> suitable knowledge roll? Um... I guess probably... Impress, I think, would be a suitable knowledge role, unless you, unless any of you have a study related to uh, a study you think might be relevant. I have the Enclave as a study. It's a good one. Huh, the city itself. All right, well, that'll give you a bonus to the knowledge roll. I don't think it's specific enough to give you like exactly who this person is. But it'll give you a plus one bonus to uh, any relevant role. Um, so, let's see. Let me think. Okay. So here are the skills that I think might be relevant for making this knowledge role. Haggle. Uh, because that is about handling money, impress for knowing people, and investigate for like knowing people in a different way. When I say impress, I mean like you make the rounds of society. Investigate right. is like you've sort of canvas, canvassing in a sense, like asking mm -hmm. around. And so you might have come across this person's name. So who wants to roll? And what do you want to roll? Well, investigate would be my roll. And just as my in my normal course of business, keeping an eye on uh, the people, you know, coming and going amongst the social circle around the opera. Because yeah. I just generally don't trust the richie riches. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, does anyone have better than Viper's plus seven modifier? A uh, question: Would notice be potentially just um, having lived in the city, it just falling like falling into my common knowledge and who this is? Yeah. Okay, I'll allow that. Okay. I and also I have... have seven in notice. Yeah. I have seven in notice as well, yeah. and then I would have eight with the enclave. Mm. Nice. Okay. Here we go. So I guess okay. Dorothy's doing this team action. Uh, 15. 15. Okay. <coughs> um, what might you have heard about Hennet Allen? Um, Hennet Allen uh, is a moneylender. I... I don't think you're able. I don't think with a fifteen, you know anything else. Just that. Yeah. Just that he. Okay. You know that he is a uh, Kadem, and that he's a money lender. Okay. So. But we don't. We don't know if the if, if it's a reputable money lender or money lender as a euphemism. <laughs> Not with a fifteen. Yeah. 
Could I run a similar check on uh, Broadwing to see what, how he might have been lending out the money? Uh, how he would be in debt with Broadwing? If it would be money lending or buying things from him or... Okay, sure. Okay. Um, 22. All right. Friends, Broadwing and me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean... I have a step in his deposition <laughs> the table. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As I said previously, Broadwing is the wealthiest individual on the island. Mm -hmm. And so, like, it's, it's unsurprising that he lends money to people. Um, I think you can tell, uh, Viper, you're able to corroborate this, that the debts that Broadwing has on... Salazar are the oldest of the d groupings mm -hmm. or at least go like started earliest obviously there's some like uh, varying dates on them but yeah Broadwing uh, had l lent Salazar the money first and mm -hmm. then Dynast Thistle lent and so did Allin um, and then there appears to have been like a competition to buy up Salazar's debt starting initially mm. with Dynastal and Broadwing or Dynastisil and Broadwing um, note that I'm using Dynastisil as a stand-in for the Dirt Folk Guild since right. since they're the uh, leader of the Dirt Folk Guild and then Allin starts buying up uh, uh, Salazar's loose debt as well mm -hmm. Any other questions about the manor and its contents? Is there anything that can just fall into my backpack? Oh, lots of stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, but, like, that I could sell easily without it being clear. <laughs> I mean, like I said, there is a... I need to confiscate evidence, and then it just gets lost in the evidence locker. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm a cop now. It's fine. Yeah, it's it's yeah. a marvel that you weren't in the uh, in the Coast Guard already. <laughs> Magical research is expensive, and I need it to solve plague. I am a hero. Oh no! Continue, continue. <laughs> so, uh, as I said, there is, there there was uh, Salazar's jewelry box on the uh, on on his dresser. Yeah, Which, jewelry is hard. Like, is there any like not really memorable pieces? I mean, there's nothing that is like the crest of the Salazar household, other than the signet ring on the writing desk. Right. It's mostly just like rings with jewels in them and gold gold necklaces and some earrings. Uh, there's the chest itself. Or the, the the jewelry box itself is like worth a bit of money. Um, you know what? He has no descendants anymore. I'm just gonna pocket the whole chest itself with all the jewels in it. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, it goes to the state, and no one needs it. <laughs> oh no! It'll just go to the debt collectors, mm -hmm. who might be criminals. So. Uh -huh. This is good. <laughs> You're very convincing. Truly a victimless truck crime. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, I'll get Madam the Madam V, uh, don't forget to heal four more vitality for uh, standing around while I was reading a book. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks for the reminder. I will do so. Okay. Um, oh, meanwhile, if we're sort of standing around when uh, when he uh, when a book is being read, um, <laughs> I'll, I'll, pa I'll pass out the envelopes of money. All right. And and let them know that uh, Boulder. Oh God. Why? Boulder Ripper. Boulder Ripper had given me the the payment before 
the performance <laughs> and I just hadn't had a chance to we have some downtime here's some money <laughs> you know you know Dorothy, I have no reason not to believe that you have been just a stellar manager this entire time I I, I truly truly can't I'm so grateful you're part of the company thank you that's that's really astoundingly kind of you to say so. <laughs> How much money, money was it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, so in in the envelopes, uh, there's fifty silver for each of you. What? That. That. What? What do you? Is that? Is that offense at the fifty silver? No, I just for for opening night. Yeah, we're making. Jesus, I don't. Walks out did real good. <laughs> Apparently, it's a good thing to be an actor in this world. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I mean, look at all the money Salazar's putting into it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it went fine for him. Mm. Yeah, great. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, as for the jewelry box itself. That is a small chest. Um, and then uh, there is, um, we'll say there's there's four pieces of jewelry in it. There's a set of earrings worth thirty silver, a necklace worth uh, fifty silver. And then uh, two rings, each of them also worth 50 silver. Assuming that you can find someone to pay that price for them. Yeah. Yeah, I assumed it would be a Hegel check. So, is there any other looting that anyone wants to do? (laughs) Redistributing the wealth is what I prefer. Thank you. Yeah. Personal property is immoral anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> so, what, where do y'all plan to go next as a preview for next time? Well, it'd be good to know who this... Um, it'd, be, it'd be good to talk to Hannah Ullen, but I, I, I think if... Um, if Madame V's going to make a suggestion, it's, it's to go to the um, uh, university. Or just, yeah. Hmm. To go Probably look. Probably head back and see how uh, Ingrid is doing, but yeah. Mm-hmm. I think I'm going to basically suit up and get my rat some armor and a weapon that would actually impact um, impact uh, sh- uh, sparked. Your your crude axe isn't going to cut it for you. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it probably would be best if we check in with Ingrill to see what she knows about these uh, individuals possibly maybe even have some social connections and then i don't know okay i know we did it tonight but it's kind of weird to be three uh armored rapscallions kicking down the front door of like one of the richest people in the city so (laughs) and some of us need to sleep (laughs) yeah okay so i'm gonna take us back to the talk screen uh, which, you know what? I'm going to leave us on the play screen because the talk screen's a bit messed up from, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit disorganized from, uh, Cassandra's unfortunately, unfortunate booting from the call due to technical issues. So we're going to stay on the, uh, the, the play screen <laughs> for the moment. Uh, so that is the session. Christine, you wanna? Uh... Sure. Yeah. So, thanks everyone who's been sitting through this. That, that sounds way more <laughs> negative than I missed. <laughs> 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 
people are freaking <laughs> out. <laughs> um, so tonight we have been joined by with uh, Sasha. Would you like to plug your uh, anything you want to plug and just let everyone know who you are again? Sure. Um, I've been Sasha. You can find me on Twitter at Sasha underscore Renault. You can find my game dev stuff at uh, Tea Cabbage, and you can listen to Spindle Wheel Stories, which is an actual play podcast of my um, my game Spindle Wheel. Uh, it's just uh, it's just called, called Spindle, Spindle Wheel Stories. So look that up on your podcatcher. And we, of course, have Austin. Hi, I'm Austin. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at not an in. And if you want to see the game that I make, it is called Beam Saber. You can find it at austin ramseyitchio slash beam saber. Um, and if you want to hear myself and Sasha play it, uh, you can find that on the You Don't Meet in an In YouTube channel. Or you can catch us live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. EST on this Twitch channel. Great. And of course, we have Hadrian. I've been Hadrian. Find me on Twitter <laughs> at Hadrian, where I will spend most of my time reminding you to uh, follow these cool people and check out their games. <laughs> <laughs> you also do wonderful art. Yes. That's also true. You're too kind. No, you're just no. the exact right amount of kind. <laughs> Not a second four. <laughs> and I'm, of course, Christine. I, uh, I'm i the creator of the You Don't Meet Men podcast, a podcast where we do actual plays with a rotating diverse cast. And you can find that wherever you get your podcast from. Wherever podcasts come from, that's where you Wherever. Can. You could just... <laughs> I don't know how loud. <laughs> <laughs> and so, thanks for coming out, everyone. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>